Hey folks, good morning. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. Doing a little different. Just recently had an interview that I did with uh, Josh Baez from JB Paid Media. Great interview. This young man is going places, especially if he has <coughs> the ability to have a good mentor, good network, good access, and good resources by his side. That interview will be coming out shortly, if not already posted. And he's one of my subscribers as well. Also one of my clients purchased property from me. And also insurance. He's got the whole gamut, the whole trifecta. 25 years of age, and he's on his way. The reason why I say that, as you can see this drive, I'm headed out in the Pennsylvania area. So I took some advice because I asked him, I said, hey, what do you think of my videos? You know, what feedback, what input could you give me regarding the videos that I make? Is it inspiring? Is, does it matter to you? Does it relate to your real life and what you're going through? And one of the things, he, you know, he's in the New York area and, and other people are in different states that watch my videos, even different countries. And one thing that I do notice is that sometimes people don't know the area very well. So I'm going to do a little bit of videos where you're actually watching the drive, not me. You can listen to me. You can watch the drive as we're going through one of the Wayne areas just outside in Philadelphia area. I live in the suburbs of Pennsylvania and the suburbs of the Philadelphia area and we will be heading on this drive into Philadelphia area. I live in a very affluent area with a lot of resources and a lot of wealth although I would consider myself somewhat wealthy not wealthy on the level of the area where I live at but again I've said before I put myself in areas where I have to compete not that I'm I don't want to be the number one in an area. I want to be in an area where I can look for things to obtain. I think I just found the title of the video is that I'm in an area where I look for the, I'm, I'm living and I see examples of the success that I want and it's not out of sight, although it may be somewhat out of reach. And when I say that, if I, I live in an area where people are retired, I live in an area where people are wealthy, where they have additional luxuries that are necessities for them, they're, they're, they're not the luxuries that were once tasted now that have become necessities, but these are just everyday occurrences for them. What in the active hell are you doing other than trying to kill me? You have a whole lane there, and this guy is all in my lane. I'm trying not to die, sir. Thank you. I can just speedily get out of your way. Good God Almighty. And in these affluent areas, you take note of things. You know, a lot of people wait until they, until they have enough money to get to an area like this. And that day never comes, actually. For me, I have enough resources to get into this area to start only been in this area five years and I've been here since we moved here and that and this again is a greater lesson about the willingness to compete that I, I talk about and a lot of people you know when I started out I lived in other areas I lived in hoods ghettos barrios all around this country some areas better a lot better than others but when I get to this place, and the reason why I'm here is to make sure that I give my kids a competitive edge. It is no longer about me and my success and my need to thrive and survive, but it is now upon me to make sure that I have an environment that my children can grow up in and thrive in, and they get the experience of understanding and interpreting, tasting and the sensation of what wealth is. A lot of people want to obtain wealth, but they've never actually experienced wealth. They haven't grown up around wealth, which is generally why the wealthy stay wealthy. 
Because when you grow up around wealth, you understand the finer things, the taste. You understand what it is like this Porsche that's right next to me. When you grow up riding in your car seat, you, you know, as a baby, and you're riding in a Porsche, when you're in a five-bedroom, million-dollar home, when you grow up, you understand what those prices are. In the same way, you're in the hood, you grow up and understand hood pricing. You grow up and understand wealth pricing. You understand that your life is surrounded by vacations or weekends to other places just for the weekend that are normally family trips that people can only do once in a lifetime. That's your weekend. When you start to live that life and experience that life and you marry into that life, and but you come from that life, you as a wife will perform and act in a different manner. What you bring to the table is much different than your ass and your attitude. Your decorum, your, 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 your way of being is going to transition into another level of thinking because you understand the environment that you're in. Which is why I've said in other videos that, yes, while you may not be that child growing up in a car seat in a wealthy family in a car like this to my right, you can be the progenitor. You can be the start, the foundation. You can be the person that gets them there. You, have, you can be the coach that you didn't make it to the Olympics, but you, you raise Olympic talent. But you've got to get you out of the way. And more importantly, you've got to get everyone else that's toxic to that progress out of the way. Anyone that threatens that is now an enemy of your state. Your cabal, your nucleus, even if those threats are from someone within your nucleus, they have to be pushed out. Your children will grow up and have friends, connections, and people who will go on to become the high operating members in society, and some will fall too as well, but they will become the, the necessary network that needs to be build, built and launch that starting point. That has to happen, and that's where it will occur. If you think about people's friends group and who their friends are initially, you'll start to get an understanding of where they're headed. You surround yourself with people who are millionaires. Eventually, the millions will come to you by way of osmosis. Just you being next to them, will you will be granted opportunities to be able to invest, to interact, or take advantage of some of the things that they're doing, and you will hear about those things that they're doing, those opportunities that they're creating, the, the risks that they're taking, <clears throat> For the benefit of growth, you'll be able to obtain that, the opportunity to take advantage of it. <clears throat> I mean, just imagine if you were around some senators and they were talking about buying NVIDIA before a law was passed and you understood that what we call insider information. Well, the reason why we know about insider information is because somebody told Somebody told that this is what they were doing, but they've been doing this long before people knew about it. Once we found out, it was just, they had already been doing it. People that had already made the money have secured their money. I mean, people might not understand what I just said there. The people that have already made their money have secured their money. When I say secured their money, it means that they've established wealth enough to move out and transition into another area, transition into another part. They don't need to be active in politics anymore. They now can spend their life understanding how to maintain and progress wealth by investing and keeping it kind of smooth sailings from here on out. They've got the grandchildren taken care of now. They're going to be all right. So folks, as I, I, I talk now, we just got off the 70, 476, and now we're on to the 76, going into Philly now. And again, you know, some of the, the notable areas, historical areas that I live near, Valley Forge, where many of the Re American Revolutionary War was fought. Some of those battles occurred in this very state. 
can see this beautiful the sunrise that's happening now and how lush and green it is in this area where I'm at. See how much it's changed over the season from my previous videos that I've done in the wintertime. How lush and green forest is. Now, one of the things I always talk about, man, you really got to understand in the earlier parts of this country just how much people work just to get through this country. When I say that is a lot of people landed on the eastern shores of the United States, Massachusetts, Jersey, even Pennsylvania. And this was all, you can see the terrain that has not been cut out. This is all dense forest, dense trees and wooded area, man. They, they had to cut through this all, that's solid rock to my right. And just how dense it was. I mean, you talk about bugs, there's no bug spray, mosquitoes. You know, the British here in white shorts with doo-doo stains on them. You know, because no one had toilet paper or cottonelle wipes, if you do that. Dang, there was a little gopher sitting right on the floor, on the side of the street there, man. Dang, I'm going to have to slow that part of the video down. Anybody see that? There was a little gopher on the side of the road, a live gopher. He's standing checking what's going on in the woods. Like he heard something. And that's what I see, a lot of nature out in this area. You've seen other videos where I'm walking and I'll see white-tailed deer, see tons of gophers or groundhogs, and I can tell the difference between the two. And a lot of foxes too as well, some rats, hawks, owls, moles, a lot of actual abundant nature and wildlife in the area. Turtles too as well. And you get a sense for understanding when you look at what I'm looking at. City life is okay, but you get an understanding when you kind of travel a little bit around this country. You get an understanding for what it took to really make America. The America we live and complain about and have the luxury of not having to survive in when America was just a terrain, when it was no refrigeration, when it was no microwaves, no convenience attached to living. <laughs> When the necessity was survival and the luxury was life, you understood the game you played. We don't have that same, that, that same obstacle now. We have convenience. I'm driving in a car with air conditioning because 77 is a little too humid for me. That wasn't, a, that wasn't an opportunity available to the, the, the people who started and founded this country. And the reason why I make that connection to you is that the same way when we talk about wealth building is that sometimes you've got to be the person to get people to the wealth area. I'm a person that's getting my children growing up, not in high school, not in college, not in retirement, where I live in the wealthy area, I'm doing it up front for my children so they can grow up and have wealthy friends. I won't even enjoy that. One of the things that's interesting is how my son had a birthday party, not his birthday, a friend's birthday party, and they had it at a country club. I wanted my wife to go because, again, I think my wife is further away from being growing up around wealth than I am. And when she went there, they had a country club. They just rented out for this eight, nine, ten year old's birthday. They, they weren't renting it out for anything other than to host it, and their members there. Their, their members there. And most of the food was, well, everything's free, obviously, even drinks and stuff like that. Whole shelves are free. And I mean, who rents out a, who rents out a country club? Not rent out the whole country club, but you know, rent out a hall and things like that for an eight year old's birthday. But at these country clubs, a lot of business connections are made. And my wife got a taste to see what affluent wives are like. My wife is pretty much like a what, traditional mother in the sense that, you know, we breast, she's breastfed our children. She stays home with them, although she still does work. But she, does, she doesn't have to work. She's not forced to work. She's working as an option to contribute to the family, but also to keep her sanity. Our children have skipped. We've done home education. And when she experienced some of the affluent wives, she understood now that they, 
yeah, the children, and this is not all, this is some, a lot of these affluent wives, they don't actively raise their children. When I say that, a lot of them have nannies. She's gone to libraries with, the, with our youngest son. And a lot of black women are there being nannies or mammies to these young white children in the same way that during slave time, the most of the people think that, you know, the, the slave master's wife, you know, actively raised, they would have what they call wet nurses, which is a, a slave mother would be, she'd have children or breastfeeding her own children and they would have her suckle the ba their baby, the slave master's baby, suckle the, the wet nurse the woman who was already pregnant and use her milk. They couldn't be bothered. And sometimes in these affluent areas, you see that they have, they'll, they'll do formula milk. They'll send their kids to daycare. They'll pay for nannies. And they, and my wife noticed how many mothers are not aware of their actual child's preferences. Meaning like what they eat, what snacks are for those. And she sees it, that some parents are totally aloof. And I was having this discussion with my mother yesterday about the same thing, is that sometimes you could have a ghetto mom that is not active in her child's life, and you can have an affluent mom that is non-existent in their child's life other than being home and being a body in the home, but not having a bond with their child because they have the wealth to pay for others to do the things that are inconvenient to the mother, which again is a part of wealth that comes with the territories, nothing you can do about it. And my wife is made aware that, you know, a lot of times these women are like, hey, when are you gonna get rid of your kids? Well, get rid of your kids, meaning get rid of them so you can start living your own life. They, they send their kids to daycare very early. I'm talking about like young toddlers less than two walking and these are wealthy families they have the ability to stay home and they still don't so where you think that two parents in a household working have to send their kid to daycare even the wealthy do it i know it because i live in an area where the, I, I can get the actual you know verbiage from the horse's mouth it's not what people say about billionaires and millionaires. When you live around them and you play, your kids play baseball together, you, 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 you have conversations with them. <clears throat> you see how their children act. Ignorance is not something that is color associated. There's a, a other end of ghetto and it exists also in the wealthy environment. Make no mistake about that. They're often very surprised and shocked at how mannered, well-mannered my children are, how they greet people, how their social skills are. Because social interactions come from parent interaction. So again, while my children may have the, I wanna say the disadvantage of being not the right color in this predominant society, they actually have a leg up in having advanced social skills and intelligence where people will take note and skip them ahead of the line. That's the other thing, raising your kids with advanced social skills, the ability to converse, the ability to interact and be well-mannered and well-spoken. Wealthy people take note of that. Now, again, when you have the complexion for the protection or you're part of that predominant society that you can bypass those things depending on what family members you're connected to depending on your last name or who knows you you might be able to bypass some of those deficiencies or defects in your personality or ability to have social skills but that's done through the connections but for other people who, are, who don't come from wealthy families, those social skills need to be, those social skills need to be advanced within your children in order to operate and advance themselves and get a foothold into wealthy environments. Those are things that people are not talking about. I'm giving you information on how to get there. A lot of people, they tell you the front end or the back end are talking about wealth. 
I'm talking about the middle of the road, how you get there. What are the things you're doing as you're making inroads? Now, again, going to this country club would be very much more beneficial for me due to the fact that I have a business that can make connections, but I'm already known because I'm, I'm a coach there. So me going there would not be the same because sometimes while it's beneficial for me to make business interactions, it's more importantly, more important for my wife to understand what the wives are like. Because again, when you have a wife that is foreign to wealth, you need to have her around wealthy wives so she can understand what it is when you say a marriage is supposed to be, how you're supposed to conduct yourself. That, that you'll see feminism in a very different form in these wealthy environments. You will see it in a very different form. It, it, it presents itself very differently. And I guarantee you, one thing I don't see is a lot of attitudes. Now, I'm sure things happen, but public decorum is very, very different here from my experiences in other areas. Not better, just different. These are observable realities that I, I'm talking about now. And like I said, it is your job incumbent upon you to get your children to the finish line where you did not begin. It is incumbent upon you to bring them to a starting point much further than there's your end point should be their starting point. Even if you're not there yet. When I had when my children were much younger, we were in Northern California and the school system there, the children barely spoke English. And when I talk about that, it's not a slander. When I went to look up the elementary school scores, which you can do for any elementary school in this country, you can look and see in the kindergarten what percentage of the students actually speak English and one of them, what percentage of students speak English as a second language, ESL. And when I looked up there and I said that English speaking students are 30% of the population at that school, English only, that meant that my kids are going to be in a place where the teachers have to devote their time to teaching the children there, the students there, the common language of English, which means my kids are going to be learning more Spanish than they were learning their ABCs. And there's nothing wrong with that, but they have classes for that. That should not be the elementary school program because of populace. And again, the when I look at the upper grades, like second, third, the testing grades, the scores reflected the percentage of students who understood the English testing material because the tests are not in Spanish. This is why that matters. They're not changing the language of the test. The test is still in English. So if you do not understand composition, prepositions, nouns, pronouns, and the proper place in a, of sentence structure, when you speak again, now advanced communication is involved, the testing score is reflected exactly the, 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 the English deficit that was going on. So I'm looking at those scores and saying, we've got to do something else which is why I'm now here in Pennsylvania. As you can see, we're coming down closer to Philadelphia now. Tons of traffic. They had been doing the roads here for a long time. One thing I gotta, I gotta ask a question of, how is it in this advanced technology now, this age we live in now, why are, are building roads or fixing roads still taking years upon years on end? I understand building and construction with some basic rudimentary understanding, but I'm like, it does not seem to me that we've gotten quicker on building roads. It, it, I mean, they've been building roads since the Roman times. Like, why does it take so long to build roads? You know, if I were ever to run for politics, I would tell people that the contracts would go to the people who give me the shortest estimation of time. And again, the project needs to be done speedily and accurately and fast as possible. Again, accurate and, and, and with speed. There is no overtime. We're not going to do that because, again, people have to get to work. Like all this road here on my left, this was this is what they fixed here. But for all the winter months, you go back to those videos, this was just traffic on track. It was like over a year, man. 
I don't understand why it takes so long. We need efficient construction, efficient road work, efficient building, and, and that should be done very quickly without disturbing. Cities should not be a congestive point for traffic. They should be alleviating that. Any which way. I, I just don't know how we have not progressed in the fact that we cannot speed this shit up. All right, I need to get over, man. You can let me in, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm just going to get over here. Thank you, sir. Not one of my best moves as a driver, but it is there. But like I said, again, you have to focus on you becoming the person that can get your family to that, that finish line. Because again, what benefit would they have? What? How are they going to get out of the hood if the hood is going to try to get them out of the hood first the hood is going to try to take them out some other way through violence through guns through drugs or some other way you've got to get them out of an area and survive to be able to thrive in a wealthy area that's your job and you can't do it where you they don't have access to resources to, which means your plan and your 20 has to be towards getting to that point. Now, if you're going to be a single person, if you're going to be single all your life, no wife, no child, disregard this whole video. But if you plan on having a family, if you're going to lay down with the woman, you've got to be prepared for this. This has got to be your 20 year plan to be able to somewhat get to where I'm at. Not that I'm there, but to be able to mitigate the things that I've learned that I did not know at an earlier time. No one prepared me for living in a wealthy area. That's something I had to do myself because I didn't come from wealth. But that's what you got to think about. You got to develop a plan. If you do need mentoring, you can always reach out to me, email me, phdavis at ancestrylands.com, and I can give you some mentorship, get you to understand how to operate and understand what you're getting into as a family person or a person looking to have a family. I'm going to tell you the things that you need to be aware of. I'm going to tell you the things that you need to prepare for. I can at least give you my format on how I've gotten two children to skip. And one that already looks like he's he's about to already. Don't forget, folks, my book, Getting Dollars from Dirt, is on Amazon. The link is in the description section below. I hope you've been enlightened, educated, and somewhat entertained, folks. Now we're in the Philly area for anybody who's wondering, down in the Drexel area. Folks, take care. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, Ancestry Lands, and I'm out. Peace.